The Bergisches Land is a low mountain range in the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia. It is part of the Rhineish Slate Mountains and shaped by forests, verdant meadows and valleys. Towering over the countryside is the Baroque Castle. In the villages, there are still timber-framed and slate-fronted houses and the famous Bergisches afternoon coffee spread with its sweet and savory offerings. Martin Turnus took over the apple orchard from his father. He dedicates himself to preserving old varieties of apple. When the apples are ripe, the whole family gets together and it's like a big celebration. Martin's wife Manuela is making the most of her maternity leave to pursue her passion for cooking. I still learn new recipes, like the tasty apple juice cream that we even make from the juice of our own apples. In early October, the apple harvest is in full swing on the family orchard. Every year, the whole family gets together to help. Martin Turnis works at the bank. The orchards are his hobby. He has a hundred apple trees, all bringing forth old varieties that you can't find in the supermarket. Only the apples that are used to make juice can be shaken from the tree, as it doesn't matter if they're bruised. The other ones are picked by hand. We have 16 different varieties. Typical of the Bergisches Land are the double and simple Luxemburger, the Kaiser Wilhelm, and the Bornapfel, not to forget the Bergische Schaffsnase. Every year, friends and family come to help with the harvest. No one is too small to lend a hand. Oh, don't eat it, it's bitter. The orchard has been in the family for generations. The trees were planted by my great-grandfather when my father was small. He can still remember it. This means the trees from which we still profit are over 70 years old. Daughter Ida is one and a half. This is her first harvest. Yeah, good. Most of the apples are made into juice that is shared equally among the harvesters. Uli will go in with the pole. I think I have more leverage from here. Martin's father-in-law has been helping with the harvest for years and knows the best way to get the apples from the tree. The others don't have orchards of their own. All the more reason to help here. The indigenous apple varieties are best adapted to the climate and are the most robust. Because they don't always look perfect, they disappeared from the shops even though they have a more intense and very special flavor. While the rest of the family is tending to the harvest, Manuela and her mother Maria are busy in the kitchen. Now we'll make something nice for the harvesters. How many are there? Oh, I think 17, 18, 18 for lunch. A stew is usually made for the harvesters. Something typically Burgish is being served this time too, the so-called carrot ungenin. This means that the potatoes, onions and carrots are all cooked in one pot, all mixed together. Ungenin. Small variations are often made to the traditional recipe. I thought we might try something different and add some ginger. Then the vegetarian option has a little more kick. Good idea. Something new for the old recipe. 
zum alten Rezept. Prima. The pot is too big for the stove in the kitchen. Next door in the converted barn, there's still an old wood-fired stove. Something tasty for the harvesters. Onions and ginger are heated in oil until they go milky. The carrots are added first as they take a little longer than the potatoes to cook. Everything is thoroughly mixed together and stock is poured over. Unganin is neither soup nor stew. Carrot unganin has to have the right consistency and not be too soft. But you do have to mash it. It's like a potato mash. You eat it with a fork and whoever wants can add a sausage. As soon as the first load of apples is harvested, Martin takes them straight to the press so the juice can be made. Juicy apples with a low acidic content are perfect for producing juice. Here, at the Weber family business, anyone can bring their apples and they're made into juice. The press only works with untreated regional apples from the local fields and orchards. The mixture of the different types gives the juice a unique taste. Juice this good can't be bought in any supermarket. How big was the harvest? Over three tons, plenty. Then we made a good estimate with 60 hundred weights. Martin reckons they will be around 1,700 bottles of apple juice this year. That's 100 bottles for the 17 harvest helpers. It's an above average harvest this year. The old trees sometimes need a year's break, so the second year is much better. A lot also depends on the blossom, whether there was any frost, and if it rained in the summer. Everything was good this year, a good result. Manuela and Maria are preparing the dessert, cream of apple juice. Manuela is mixing sugar, vanilla powder, and apple juice. Whilst Maria whisks the eggs. You put the eggs in a pot, and I'll go after. Okay. Now it's given a good mix. This is an old family recipe. At least, I found it in an old recipe book belonging to my mother-in-law, and it's delicious. The apple juice is added at the end, and everything is beaten into a froth. That's done here. Now it has to cook on a low flame until it gains a creamy consistency. When the weather allows, the family and the harvesters eat together out in the orchard. You dear harvesters, food is ready. What a table and the sun shining, great. This is fantastic. Super. This is fantastic. Who wants apple juice? Fresh from the press? Ah. 
Moments like this, when the whole family gets together, are rare, as not everyone lives in the Bergisches Land. Whipped cream rounds the apple juice cream off perfectly. <laughs> Tomorrow, at the end of the harvest, there will be a Burgish coffee spread with many different dishes and a very special coffee pot that Martin still needs to get. The Bergisch coffee spread is a historic coffee time with all the trimmings. Everything you have to offer is laid out on the table. Martin's friend is a restaurant owner and has some of these rare coffee pots. Hello. Hi, Martin. Hi, Andreas. How are you? For the coffee spread, the Drüppelmine, the name for the tin pot, can't be missing. It got its name from the wife of the Kaiser, Wilhelmina, or Mina for short. When the Mina is filled with ground coffee and the hot water is poured in, the tap opening is blocked and it begins to drip. Tropelmina. Just put the filter coffee in and turn the tap. Yes, we heat the metal with warm water first, then the water and coffee goes in. And then it keeps for a long time? Then it does keep for a long time. The heat of the metal keeps it warm. Just twist this open and back again to shut it. It's very practical. Erdinghausen lies in the Oberbergische Kreis and has 130 inhabitants. Martin's family has been living here since the end of the 18th century. Come on, sweetheart. Let's go look. The family still keeps some chickens. We'll throw it in to keep them busy. Now we'll go and see how many eggs there are. Manuela needs the eggs for dinner. She's making Fannenwatz, a type of potato pancake. Martin grates the raw potatoes and wrings out the water. The fresh eggs and some onions are added. I'll measure out the oat flakes for you. The oats are there to soak up the rest of the moisture. A spoonful of sour cream adds some flavor. Fannenwatz is prepared as a savory meal, but also used to be eaten as a cake. It may sound odd, but sweet condiments like stewed apple were added, and it was eaten cold instead of cake. Manuela places the grated potatoes into a greased baking tray and lets them go brown and crispy in the 200 degree oven. Oh yes, good and firm. Endive salad and Bergisch sausage is served with the Pfannenwatz. How many do you think we harvested? The truck was pretty full. I think we'll get 10 tons. You think? That would be great. The next morning, Martin and Olaf Schriever take a look at the orchard. Olaf is a pomologist. The apple expert knows the old varieties like no other. Up there I have a tree. I think it's a Jakob label, and I'd like your opinion on it. Also, because they're quite early. A lot of the fruit is already on the ground, and other orchards have already been harvesting. But that makes sense. It's quite typical for the Jakob label with a thick stem. Oh, it is quite thick, exactly. Yes, you can store this for two months. You can almost use it as a hand cream, it's so thick. 
The apples that grow on Martin's great-grandfather's orchard are all traditional indigenous varieties. Martin knows most, though not all of them, and he's keen to find out exactly what's what. Ein Pflücken und Essen. Ja, das scheint wirklich alles die gleiche Sorte zu sein. The Bogusa Schafsnase is a very old variety. This tree was planted around 1900, so it's the oldest of the young ones. The fruit is a yellow fruit and is a sweet apple that can be made into a stew or a compote. We found only seven of these trees here in Bergisches Land. It looks like a Schafsnase. Yes, exactly, especially this long shape. But this is bright red and the Bergische Schafsnase is very yellow. Martin and his father-in-law, Uli, are making Apfelkaut, a kind of sweet jam that can't be missing from the Bergische coffee spread. The apples are first shredded. The sweet Schaffsnase apple is perfectly suited for making Apfelkaut. Martin has kept a lot of the old machinery on this farm. Most of it belonged to his grandfather. The apple mulch is put into sacks so the juice can be extracted. Yeah, this itself is almost pure juice without having even been pressed. <laughs> Should we see how we can get the most juice out? Lid on. Making Apfelkaut used to be a social event. The whole village would come together to make it after the harvest. Apfelkraut is a Bergish speciality from the days when there was no industrially produced sugar. The apples with high sugar content were intentionally grown, so you could have a natural sweetener in winter and put it on your bread and food. It keeps for a long time because it's pure sugar syrup. Hold it under. Good. Thank you. Let's see how good this is. It's sweet. There's sugar in it. That's going to make good kraut. Cooking kraut has a long tradition here, yet few are still able to do it. My great-great-grandfather would go to the farms with his horse and cart, collect the sweet apples and created a place where people could have their kraut cooked. The sweet juice cooks in an old copper pot for a few hours and becomes a thick mass that has to be stirred constantly if it's not to burn. Uli, how far along are you? A lot is cooked off. It looks good. Try it. No, you have to see how it thickens. Do you want to try some? I'll try. It's very good. Let's try getting this out of the pot. Well, you can understand why they used to call it card grease. Because it's so black? Ah, because it's black, nice and fluid. That looks good. There's a lot left. As the sweet syrup cools in the glasses, it hardens. Manuela and Maria are making two cakes for the coffee spread an apple tart and sweet raisin bread. Yeah. Yes, the tasty apples from your orchard. Yes, it's wonderful how many there are this year. They have a much better flavor than those you buy. For the bread, Manuela adds the raisins to the yeast dough and kneads it until they're all mixed in. 
freue mich auch richtig auf I'm looking auf forward to the raisin bread. Ja It's the highlight of the Burgish coffee Highlight spread. And we don't make it that often. Ja. Den machen wir ja auch sonst nicht im, im Alltag eigentlich, ne? Weniger. Mm, not often. Ja. And then baked in the old oven, that's something special. Schon was anderes als einen ganz normalen Backofen. Maria is making mousse out of the apple pieces. For this, you need to make sure you have the right variety of apple. I like to use the Jakob label apple for the tart, or the Boskop. They're nice and juicy and become creamy when you cook them, which makes them good for baking. Maria adds the apple compote to the yeast dough and some cinnamon for that extra flavor. The remaining dough is cut into strips. It wouldn't be a tart if you didn't have the strips for the top. The top is glazed with egg yolk, which will turn golden brown in the oven. The old village oven is in a barn a few houses away and is also called Bacchus. Martin is heating it up as this is where all the breads and cakes will be baked for the traditional coffee spread. The oven belongs to Martin's family and has always been used by the whole village. In the old days, there were only open fires in the houses, and an oven would take up a lot of space and be a fire hazard. That was the main reason for having it outside the house. People were very scared of fires in straw-roofed houses. For the coffee spread, the villagers prepare their dough and pastries at home and then bring them to the backers to be baked. Here we have a raisin bread. Okay. How long does it need? 50 to 60 minutes. Okay, what temperature? 200 degrees. Danke. Here, the tart for backers. Good luck. Thank you. You need to poke it so it goes down a little. I'll see you later. Hi, I've made a potato bread with nuts. It needs around 45 minutes at 220. Okay, it needs to be a bit hotter. Great. Ja, Martin, jetzt yes, Martin, we need to get some sort of order going. Die Brote und alles, yeah, the bread and everything that needs high heat, we need to get through that. Whatever doesn't need as long to cook can go to the back. So we'll take the first, and then that, and then that. Das. It needs to keep its heat over time, hot first for the bread and then a little cooler for the other things. Okay. Right. And that's the last one? Yes, that's the last. Next door, the ladies attending to the preparations for the spread. There are no strict guidelines as to what needs to go on the table. Savory can be served alongside sweet and the Bergisch Apfelkraut. It looks great, just as it should. With the Tröppelmina. The breads and cakes are ready. The idea is for all the food the host has under his roof to be served to spoil the guest. The Turner's family has invited all the harvesters and villagers to the barn. The Bergisch coffee spread is still an expression of the warm hospitality in the Bergisches Land. Zum 
The Bergish coffee spread is brought to life by the people. When there's such a lively get-together and people enjoy themselves, it's great to have a Doppelmina here at the table. It creates such an atmosphere and all these good things that make up the spread. What a wonderful feeling. Das ist schon ein tolles Gefühl.